I have been working at this place for the last 12 years and uh, it's truly a fantastic place I hold very close to my heart. Today it's time that we do some grayling fishing at night. Uh, I was about to go to sleep. I've been out uh, photographing a group of guests today, doing a guiding. It's been quite windy today. We still had very good fishing. We caught uh, both grayling and trout and pike during the day, which is um, really awesome. We had this double with both a nice trout and a nice grayling bolt on dry fly. But we are in a time of the midnight sun. It's now 11, it's probably 12 o'clock before I'm done prepping, driving out to the water and I'm ready to fish. And my plan is to just continue what's been working during the day and do some grayling fishing. So it's gonna be very fun. I'm gonna take you with me, of course. Let's go. When we have these beautiful conditions for it, I prefer to only fish with the dry fly. We have no wind at all. Fish is rising. So I'm fishing with a small CDC and hare's ear caddis, you could say. Quite a small fly. Gonna give it a try. If it works well, we maybe tie it in the end of this video. <laughs> so, <laughs> what makes me laugh? The, well, the, the graylings that we are targeting today, we're doing at a legendary place. <laughs> Maybe not so many know it by the name, but um, this is uh, the stream called Tyvek, which is like the home pool or home stream of uh, Chonayok. And I just <laughs> caught my first fish here. It was actually a tiny trout. I took the fly on quite long distance. I had some while I was rigging up. I had a few sparse rising fish, which I paid attention to where they were. So now I placed out the dry fly on those spots. They haven't come up again or so. It's, it feels very like they're seldom rising here. But uh, this place is both known for its incredible size of grayling and also the crazy number of grayling there is here. This is about a 700 meter stretch of river. And they estimate that it's about 4,000 graylings on this, on this part of the stream, which is incredible. There is, for every big stone, you can, you can count on that there will be several graylings. Since I don't have any fish rising steadily here, I'll just move down a little bit towards the stones. See if I can, uh, when I place the fly in the current seams around them, I'm sure something will come up and take it. but uh, a small trout. That was a nice start. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even fishing. <laughs> I was just... Uh, <laughs> I was just getting my first grayling. <laughs> I was... Uh, whoops, going back. I was uh, just moving this tri tripod solution I have rigged here. I have a bolt just out of frame here. It's the bolt edge that I'm dragging around, anchoring here in the stream to get such a, as nice of an angle of uh, your perspective as possible. And uh, right away, <laughs> when I came to this spot, I hooked into the baby grayling. So both are grayling and tri trout right away. Very good start. Now we're just trying to upsize this. Now I come down to this 
recurrent themes of the stones that I've been talking about. We'll see if this bolt rigging solution disturbs the fish too much or if it actually works. You can imagine it's a little bit different if you just wait, it, wait out on these places yourself. Oh, there. No, came off. That was better. <laughs> but it's uh, the same kind of angle that I fished for sea trout in my other videos on the channel. So people that are watching that, I want to feel at home. Maybe my strategy of fishing towards the bank here will be proven to be wrong, but I'll still try it a little bit more and move down past these stones. I've been fishing for like half an hour now and only caught a few of these small ones. And might have to flip around the camera after that. Fish the outside towards the deep. Have to figure out where they're hanging. No way. I have a grayling on. I'm moving the boat again. <laughs> okay, I have to put in the anchor. I think this is a little bit better fish. Okay, I have it now. This boat solution was maybe a little bit too difficult. It's on the other side of the boat now. Okay, I need to reel in this mess. Okay, the grayling made a full spin around the boat and it's now at the engine on the other side of the boat <laughs> oh my god i have to go around here here look at this <laughs> the fish is right there <sighs> and now i managed to get it around here Woo! now this is a grayling this is the last time you ever see a video like this <laughs> this was a terrible idea does this count like on dry when the, the, the rod was actually laying inside the boat and I heard the rod tip move a little bit. So I lifted up the rod, trying to figure out what was going on. I thought I was stuck in bottom, so I tried to roll cast it loose from the bottom. But like in the third roll cast, I noticed it was not stuck on the same spot anymore. So I hope this poor guy or stupid guy did not swallow the fly completely when I was not paying attention. <laughs> so, due to handling the boat, I caught tonight's first big grayling. This is maybe a grayling of 46, 47 centimeters, which is a, there, I'll let it go, which is a beautiful grayling. But for this stream, it, or for this river actually, that's, average size. That's the normal size you catch here, which is kind of insane. I've checked the box of tiny fish. I checked the box of average fish. And now here on the outside, I just saw a massive rice. See if I can sneak up. <laughs> with myself and both included to get a shot to cast on this. Five, six, seven meters out, there is a deep edge where uh, the main uh, mass of water is moving by. And that was where the fish was rising. And I'm not really within casting distance to that fish just yet. I will, I just had one rise in the distance so I can't really locate exactly where it is. Just making some cast closer in while I'm adjusting the camera. <laughs> I heard a rise, <laughs> made a hook set, and it was on my fly. Again, a tiny fish. 
that will quickly be released. Small grayling, making my fly wet. That's most what they do. Still appreciate them though. But it hasn't been much science at all. This is the fish that I'm slowly about to approach. It's the first sign that I for sure can tell was a big fish. Otherwise there's some wakes of fish here and there, but they seem to be all small fellows. There, better fish. Not giant, but I think it could be a trout because it's behaving like crazy. Yep. Wow, okay. <laughs> Taking line upstream, trying to steer it on the right side of the boat, but it, it will not cooperate really. Yeah, it's a trout. Second trout of the evening. This one I can show properly. They're so beautiful here. And uh, like when you When you are fishing here, there is surprisingly a lot of, of trout as well. This tiny one gave me a nice fight. Ran upstream, took all the line I had out. Really fun. I'm just gonna release it by using the release tool from Marc Petitjean. You just slide it onto the line and it catches there. And then you push it down to the fly and it releases the fish. Very easy. Just have a lock mechanism there. Oh! <laughs> the, <laughs> the trout actually snuck out through one of the holes in this net. I have quite many by now. Here for example, big hole. <laughs> so it went away. <laughs> I thought it seemed a little bit quiet in the net, <laughs> so it disappeared. <laughs> See that? That's the one I want. No, I don't think it took my fly. It took something else. This is the kind of perfect way to Test if a fly is good, if it works in this calm, flat surface. But it seems to be working better even when it dips down underneath the surface. I like these kind of flies that you can fish in many ways. So as soon as I started to fish it as a wet fly, I have a fish on. Here it comes. All right. <laughs> so that's a... Uh, most likely the biggest grayling of the night. So convenient, I don't want to use anything else. You can use it with both hands and you just slide it on. How oh, this uh, fly ends up in the top of, the, of it like that. We here have tonight's most beautiful grayling. Whoa. This was a, really a tank. Time to go back. That was a proper dry fly take. Did you see that? <laughs> Sorry, it's very hard to get everything in frame. Oof.
So this is a beautiful grayling, caught in the whoa, caught in the middle of the night. Very dark fish, really cool. Putting it back. Nice. This was on the truly deep place, calm water, a good dry fly take. That's what I came for tonight. Mission accomplished. <laughs> when talking about finding a fly that works well, it's among the most difficult I found to when you fish with the dry fly. Slow moving water, no disturbance on the surface and over deep water to get the fish to rise to a fly then, it only works if you have the right fly. Today I managed with this CDC and Harris Air dry fly, super easy to tie. Gonna head back right to the fly tying and show how I do it. Uh, this is a fly that is very similar to one a guest made for me once. Unfortunately, I don't know the name of the fly. The guy was from Poland and uh, if you are from Poland, maybe know the fly name there or know the fly name in general, please write it down below. Always fun to hear and if I can uh, if I can give some credit to someone, so this is definitely not a pattern I come up with myself, but something I really want to share with you because it's one of my favorites. So back inside now to tie the fly. Uh, it's a really fun evening to be out. Lots of rising rising fish, which was, uh, yeah, it was a phenomenal night. Uh, this is gonna be very short since it's just the two materials. Gonna get to the flight time right away. But isn't this cool? Sitting in the restaurant now and during the middle of the day when everyone is out fishing. Uh, it's a really cool place. And when I had this rigged up now, I, t I filmed several other videos as well where I showed the gear that I use for grayling fishing, for example. So I'll leave the link to that as soon as it's ready down in the description. So let's get to the tying. I'm using the dry fly barbless A-Rex hook in size 16. Uh, and in the back, I just use one CDC feather as a tail. Then I do the body and then I place two like medium sized CDC feathers as the wing. And then a little bit more dubbing in front. I really brush this fly hard to blend the materials together. I think it looks way nicer then, and then, then you get this leg-looking effect from, from uh, the hair seer dubbing. So, let's begin. 